Hey folks, I'm Dieter Melhorn. This video, it's a long one, but it has a lot of good information in it, especially for you folks that might be new at chasing catfish. There's also a really good side-by-side -side catfish bait comparison. We're putting chicken, plain chicken, nothing on it, up against fresh cut bait. And you might be surprised which one catches the most fish. All right, guys, let's see what we got up here in the bait cooler. We got a bluegill and a shell cracker from the other day. And we got us some chicken. I caught the uh, shell cracker and the bluegill. I got a tank full of them here. Uh, the other day, I was here getting some bait for a guide trip I had yesterday, so I got that left over. And I got some chicken, plain chicken. Uh, you guys that watch the channel a bunch know that I'm notorious for using the strawberry chicken, used it religiously, caught thousands of fish on it. Uh, but I'm trying the plain here for a little bit. I tried it for a few days, I tried it on a guide trip yesterday. I think we caught a dozen fish. I think seven of them came on the plain chicken versus the fresh cut bait. So uh, I'm gonna experiment around a little bit with it, see if the catch rates continue. It's been about 70% of my fish have been caught on chicken when I'm fishing it side by side with cut bait. So I'm just gonna use this plain. I don't think there's a difference. I don't think the jello makes that big of a difference to be, per to be perfectly honest. I've said that for a while. So uh, we're getting here into late spring, uh, almost summertime by the calendar, uh, even though it's summer by the meteorological summer. But anyways, a whole bunch of stuff. We're going to put these baits out. We're going to do some trolling. Going to cover some water. Water's around 82 degrees, 81, 82. Clear, lake stable, <clears throat> no significant rains. It's just uh, perch are starting to school back up. We're seeing pretty big schools of those. Saw those on the guide trip yesterday. And, uh, you know, catfish are here or there, you know, here, here and there. They're, they're, they're still in spawn mode. So it's not going to be on fire spawn wise, but we're going to see if we can find them, see where they're at. Let's get some bait in the water. Got a couple of planer boards I'm going to put out. Some of these B-cap boards, you've seen my videos on them. I'll put those out. Got a little catfish cutting board. Got to have a cutting board. Got all your bait up on. There's the uh, couple of the dead ones. I got a few that died overnight. Keep the fresh ones, chunk the old ones. If they're whited out, I'm trashing them. It's a good one flared gills that's a good perch still bad bait it's whited good one bad one bad one Doesn't matter uh oh large mouth he'll make a good bait that's actually a spotted bass we'll use him good bait cut him up into two good pieces there spotted bass head as is usually my sequence red rods today these are ripping lips rods the super cat i've got one bait casting version and the other is a spinning red is going to be chicken every red rod will have chicken on it today so you guys can keep track at home and keep score nice little chunk of chicken when you use this chicken guys you do not have to use huge pieces of bait as a matter of fact i've said repeatedly that i believe the smaller baits work better with this stuff for whatever reason so that's all i'm using nothing super huge like i said a couple of these rods are spinning rods these have the pc fun spinning reels on them i know a lot of you guys don't like using bait casters i understand that no problem so i started putting these spinning reels on the boat uh, just to show people that you can catch fish with them all day long. If you want to get one of these reels, I'll put a link down in the description below. Otherwise, go to my website, Dieter Melhorn Fishing. Go to the gear section. I've got them listed on there. And you can get them. And you'll love them. They're good reels, especially for the money. They're not expensive. Hold a lot of line. A couple of these have the replaceable spool so you could have a spool with mono you can have a spool with braid 
you'd be set either way. So I believe this is the one, the carnivore that comes with the replacement spool, which is awesome sauce. Here's another one of them. This is the Viper X. We'll put it out and we're gonna put a planer board on it. I'll show you guys how to do a planer board if you hadn't seen it before. These are all Santee rigs, by the way, guys. Bone Town drifting sinkers, Santee rigs, nothing fancy. No rattles or any of that stuff on them, just a very basic Santee rig. Gonna put this one out. I got these other lines going out. I put my lines out, I stagger on this one here. In the center will be about 150 feet back. Knocking in gear. This one here I'll put out maybe 75, just so there's a stagger. Then what I do is I put the out one with, on the planer board. I've got videos about this if you wanna see it, but I'll show you real quick. I just cast this one out to the side. Doesn't have to be a super big cast. What I'm gonna do is just let it sink until it hits the bottom. On the bottom, let the line go off. Boom. Let's drop. Boom. I think we're on there. What I'm gonna do is put this planer board on. What this does is it gives me a wider spread. Like I said, I've got videos that go in depth on how to put these things on. I like these from BCAT. They've got this locking clamp here and a peg. Helps keep my board on should I get it broke off in a snag somewhere. But put those out. Those things go out. And poof, we are fishing, guys. All right, gonna put out some cut bait on this side. Got me a piece of spotted bass on here. Yes, guys, we can use spotted bass in North Carolina, at least on these lakes. Uh, used to be two of any size. Then they kind of decided they wanted to get rid of spotted bass, so you can use any one you catch. Gotta cut us a bluegill head off here. Small bluegill, as I drop my remote. Not a super huge one. Get that sucker going on here. Nice, nice, nice. Boom. Good bait. Great bait. So what's happening here, guys, is I'm trolling. I am using my battery-powered trolling motor. Uh, to move up through here very slowly. You can see I'm doing about 0.5. Got a little remote control here to help me control it so I don't have to be on the pedal all the time. And I'm just trolling up through here. Uh, we're gonna try some varying depths and see what works. I don't change the speed though. Speed, I try to keep in that half mile an hour range. That's uh, a good sweet spot. You can go slower if you want to. I don't suggest you go too much faster um, just because it's, uh, the slower you go, the better, generally speaking. So keep it slow, and uh, you'll catch more fish. But we're going to sit back, relax, try to catch some fish. Boom, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Got one nailing that bait. Let's get this rod going. This is a chicken bait. Way back there. Might have put too much line out on this one. I was just sitting there. I thought the planer board went off and there was nothing on it. Picked into this one. Way back there. Have to get some line back on this one. There he comes. There he comes. He's back up to the boat. Yeah, I'm not sure something was on that planer or what. I thought it was a fish. Who knows? Could have been this fish. This one is a chicken. The other one was a perch. Or a... I'm not even sure what was on that one. Simmel. Let's go back to this side, big boy. Back to this side. Trying to get him over here to the good sun side. In the bug. Another fish, I think. There we go. There 
I said these are the ripping lips rods a very affordable rod I might add as far as oh he popped off dang popped off right there at the boat I was trying to nurse him up too it was a good fish felt like a 10 or 20 ish it's a red one it's on the chicken it'll happen it will happen everything good it just popped loose get that bait back in the water try to find another one guys i just had that fish come off was putting the bait back out and this rod went off another one on chicken this one is on one of the pc fun spinning reels not a big fish this is not as this is not the fish i lost by any means little smaller fish Just, I hadn't even got that planer board back out on the other side. Let me knock this one in gear. Yeah, this is a channel cap. Which we will happily take. Boy, he barely hooked. Boonk. Boonk, boonk. Boonk, boonk. Get him loose. Pop off of that sucker. Little channel. All right, we got one to the boat on chicken. And got one in the boat on chicken. So, plain chicken working good so far. I wish we would have had the last one. The last one, that was a good one. That was a pitcher worthy fish. And that one there, not so much. Skunk's gone. All right, guys, well, there's the first fish in the boat. We got two to the boat. Uh, the one was right down underneath it. Uh, I think maybe had I decided to net him instead of boga gripping him, we would have got a picture of him, but ah, that's fishing. Um, the uh, channel cap, uh, a little less exciting, but fish nonetheless. Uh, a, uh, a hit on the chicken side, a hit on the perch side. So just uh, gonna continue this drag up through here. I'm kind of trolling into the wind a little bit. We have a very light breeze. Uh, it may be a little more manageable uh, in this direction. I'm gonna try this for a while and just see. I've got some river channel here, a little bit deeper water. Uh, I can come in and out of it. And we'll see what's in here. Like I said, this is getting toward the middle of the spawn traditionally. So uh, it, it may be good, it may be bad. We'll see that one good fish uh, hooked into there. That's a good sign. But uh, sometimes you just have to get out and fish, and that's what we're doing. Uh, again, chicken on one side on the red rods, cut bait on the white and orange rods. We're going to see what we can stick. There's one, guys. That looks like a good fish right there. Better fish anyway. Maybe, maybe that's that one we lost earlier. I doubt that. That one's pretty far away back. This one does not feel as big as that one. This feels like a medium range fish, which I'm happy to have. I'm going to be honest with you. We've had, this is the third bite we've had this morning. I'm kind of excited that we're getting this high of a bite and catch rate. This one, sadly, is in the two other lines. I already see them moving over on the other side. It feels heavy. I can't tell if that's the other lines. Maybe some of it is. I'm gonna see if I can get around those lines. Let's see if we can clear one of them. That would be a negative bob. We are not getting around that line. We're just gonna have a mess to deal with. Well, let's see. Maybe this one. Maybe, maybe. Woohoo. Oop, wrong way. Wrong way. And around this. This. Okay. Got one out of the way. Guys, this fish feels heavy. Probably ought to get the net. If I was a smart man, I would. Catfish Pro rod and reel. I may have planter board going too. It's a better fish, better fish, better fish. Better fish, happy with that one. I'm gonna, play, I'm gonna bug a grip it. I'm gonna try to bug a grip it. This fish is acting awful docile. Appears to be hooked good.
Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. That's a good fish. That's a good fish. That's a good fish, guys. Got those lines from those baits around it. Big female. Heck yeah. We will catch fish like that all day long. All day, day long. Oh, well, it's just, let's see what kind of mess we got here. Let's see what we got. I get everybody freed up here. Stop, stop, stop. Look at that. Gorgeous specimen right there. And got one going on the planer. <laughs> All right, guys. Good looking fish. Right at 20 pounds. Gonna get this one back alive. All right, guys, there you go, fish number three. That was a good one. Uh, that was a very good fish. No complaints with that one at all. Uh, a nice fish there around uh, 19 pounds and uh, looks like a big female, nice and healthy, and uh, got into a couple lines, but that's okay. And then meanwhile, I get a rod going off on the other side of the boat and uh, I've got a channel cat on it. I think there may have been a hit on another rod even still during the middle of all that. So uh, I'm going to have to check some baits here just to make sure everything's going. But uh, that fish came on uh, the cut bait side, and, uh, including the channel cat, which ate the uh, spotted bass head that I had out. So uh, for you guys that wonder, spotted bass, uh, the, the way it works here where I'm fishing in North Carolina, it's legal to use these fish. Uh, and on... Some of these lakes through here, they actually have no limit and no size limit. They're trying to eradicate them, which will be virtually impossible to do, but they're trying to lower the numbers on the spotted bass. So you can use all of those things that you want. Uh, but uh, they make great bait. So when I can go catch them, I go catch them and put them to use and try to help the fishery and help my bait tank. So uh, we're gonna keep on pulling through here for a little while. We'll try this uh, for a little while until it dies off, then we'll make a move. But for now, we're gonna try to catch more fish. All right, guys, let's deal with the planer board first. By the way, that last fish was on cut bait. And so is this one. I haven't even got that one rebated yet. I know this is a spotted bass head i'm not sure if that was a body section or that bluegill let's see if this one's still buttoned up here he was dragging around out there during that whole hey, yep i feel him pulling he was dragging around during that whole last battle clicker was starting to engage not as big a fish but we'll take him Yep, small channel. Oh, better nurse him if I want to get him to the boat. Better nurse him. Look at that. Hitting. Hitting the bass head. Look at that. Bass head. <laughs> That's crazy. They will eat some big stuff when they're hungry. That is. Little channel. Hitting that old bass head. Get him hooked back up. Get him back in the water. Well, pal, there you go. Three catfish back to back, channel cats and blues, in a very narrow area. Why? Why are they there? Why did I catch them there? Well, generally speaking, when that happens, uh, you've got some kind of food source around. You're either on a food source or a good piece of structure. That's not a whole lot of structure right there in that area. My money's on food. Uh, there was a lot of stuff in there. 
Uh, that blue had some mussels in its belly. There were some fish on the sonar. Maybe they were in there feeding on bait fish, uh, feeding on perch, who knows? Maybe it was just up there on that shoal, uh, feeding on some of those mussels and some of that soft material in there. Uh, but generally, that's what's gonna happen. When you get onto a flurry of fish like that, you've hit the sweet spot, uh, whether, again, that be food or structure. Uh, generally, food will produce longer than structure will. Uh, structure seems to generally hold a limited number of fish while you get a food source and you can fish it and fish it and fish it and fish it and refish it so uh just a little note to self there if you get into a flurry of them like that pay attention to what it is uh you know what you're fishing whether that be from the bank or from the boat uh boat or from the bank you're probably gonna know a little bit better as far as whether you're around some structure because uh you may be getting hung up in it so uh, that can kind of give you some clues plus Generally, your bite will come to an end, whereas if uh, you're sitting there bank fishing, you got some baits out and you're on a good muscle bed and fish are in there feeding constantly, or you got some shad that are pulled up there and holding on a point or around something, uh, they will continue to feed. So uh, just a little something. When it happens, it's wonderful. All right, boys and girls. We got us a Eda. We got us a Eda. Just came across some fish. I made a move down up the river here a little ways and uh, making a little, I'll call it exploratory drag across here. Got hooked up. This is a smaller fish. Feels like a channel cat. I don't know what I'm thinking anyway. Come up on a little bit of a point here, underwater point. Gonna come off of it back into a river channel. And this is a cut bait fish piece of bluegill. I got nothing but bluegill out this time. I still have that bass head out on the planter board. This should be a channel cat. It is a channel cat. Chunk. I'm going to make the call and say that I think the channel cat spawn is over with. I caught a bunch of these on guide trips yesterday, past couple of days here and on Lake Norman. I think these suckers have done their business. Guys, I think while that bait was going back out or while I was bringing that fish in, I got hit on this rod. Opposite side of the boat, I had my back turned. Got hit. Chicken bait here. The bad part is, I'm pretty sure this one is into the planer board, which is going to make for a mess getting it in. This is a small fish. This will be a lot of luck if I get this one in. Matter of fact, I'm tempted because I'm going to have to drag the planer board in along with the fish. The odds of getting this fish in without losing it are not good. Welcome to my life. I think, now this other rod's going there. That is not tangled up in this mess, as far as I can tell. Now this looks like a big fish, but it's not. I got the planter board. It's a nice fish, not a monster, but that's a different fish there. Uh, all right, managed to pluck him up in here. Good chicken bait fish. Can't tell if that, oh, that belly is full of mussels. Belly's full of mussels, wonder why it's hitting chicken. <laughs> That'll tell you, that'll tell you. Let's get that back, this one back alive. Get a little bit of an untangle here. There you go, guys. You can see the chicken. Like I said, all my red rods are chicken. Or anything about circle hooks, I know people watch these videos like, man, you had fish on when you get, you ain't got to, you can take your time. We'll just leave that piece of chicken on there. Boom. Boom. Bada bing. Wait, started to put that one out. That's gonna be a recipe for disaster. Another fish. 
they're right up here on that point there's a uh, long underwater point comes out here and that's three fish in a row right on that point tells me probably need to go back through there not a big fish smaller fish another one on chicken again giving this plain chicken a try here i don't think there's any difference between this and having jello on it i've said this for a long time guys it's a good channel good channel boom nice channel like i said i think the spawns over some old wounds there i don't know if that's a boat prop or a bike hook what it is i think these old channel cats are about done for the year with their spawn and that's a good sign boom got him chicken bait going made a pretty long pull since the last fish guys pretty long pull down through here and uh it's the first bite i've had in a while this one is in the river channel but man we came through a lot of water a lot of water and uh nothing 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 yeah, and this is on a chicken bait. This is one of the carnivore reels I was telling you about earlier from PC Fun. Put your link in the description if you're interested in them. Simmer, 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 simmer. Simmer. Shaking his head like a channel cat, but feels like a bigger fish. Don't think it's a giant, but we're happy to get one. It's a good blue. Let me work him over to this side of the boat. Make it a little easier to get it in. There we go. Again, on chicken. Chicken doing a good old plain chicken doing good. That's a nice fish. In your mouth. Boy, oh, you lose one right there. Got yeah. him. Yeah. Her. Hook out. Boop. Gag. Looking blue. Pound simmer, pretty fish. We'll take those all day long. Chicken eater, isn't that chicken bait? Oh, yeah, good female back alive. There you go, there's number eight. That was a nice fish, nice blue. Man, it took a long while to get to that one, uh, covered a lot of water. Uh, I don't know if the bite's dying off or I'm just coming through a bad area, but uh, had that one, had another rod go off on the planer board and uh, didn't stay hooked up on that one. Both of them on the chicken side of the boat, uh, kind of coming through some river section here, marking fish, fish are around. And uh, I don't know if I'm just hitting some areas where we got some post-spawn fish and a lot of them are still spawning, who knows? We're kind of getting toward the middle to the end of it, just depending on when it started, which we never really know that. Uh, you know there's no it's not like there's an exact date it's not like memorial day starts it and july 4th ends it it can be anywhere in that time range but not a bad catch rate uh my past my guy trip yesterday i had a dozen fish which wasn't bad a couple in the teens and you know today i'm up to eight which is not bad uh so there's some there's some hope here with what's going on but summertime no boat traffic yet uh that's another thing we have to deal with here on a lot of these lakes in the area that i'm in um but just dragging some baits here like i said cut bait got some uh uh perch and bluegill on one side also got that spotted bass head and uh 
got some chicken out on the other and uh, I think chicken may have a little bit of a lead uh, not a lot but I think slightly so I'm gonna keep pulling here for a little bit and uh, may relocate try one more place before I pull the plug on it but for now I'm pretty happy with what I'm catching all right guys got one going on a chicken bait man we have pulled a long way down through here I hope this one stays hooked up I just want to get it in <laughs> it's a long pull uh, the only fish is probably a channel cat just judging from the way it hit and the way it's shaking its head but on up in the day now approaching noon and this time of the day when stuff has slowed down a bunch it's actually a blue it's a small one there you see Simmer down, fella. Simmer down. Thought we would have had more of these in through here. Not catching this size fish that much anymore in our lakes. Uh, good what I'd call an eater size blue. We just don't catch that many more, that many of them anymore. I think, I think the reason is they're getting eaten by the catfish, to be perfectly honest. I think that's a good eating size fish for a flathead. Maybe even a blue cat. So I think they fall victim to a lot of them. A lot of, we lose a lot of our smaller fish, but we got this one. This one gets to go back. Maybe he can uh, cheat death and <laughs> grow into a monster. That's several fish on the chicken. Uh, it's, it's, it's working plain. Uh, I know, like I said, I've, I've used the strawberry jello for a while and uh, it works, it catches fish too. Uh, I just, I don't believe, honestly, that the jello makes that big of a difference. Uh, it appears that the chicken, uh, our catch rate today is about the same, uh, slightly better than half uh, of the fish come on chicken. That's the way most of my trips have been. It's been around 68 to 70% of the fish come on chicken. Uh, you know, previously that was in the strawberry jello uh now it's just plain chicken and it it i don't think the jello is as big a deal uh as far as being a fish attractant as it is a angler attractant because it's red and it looks bloody and we sometimes think that stuff has to be bloody for a fish to eat it but uh, let's uh, let's just deal with the facts here folks catfish rarely encounter blood in the wild uh, most of the time they are eating live fish or live animals, crustaceans, mollusks, whatever. And it's not like a shark that will, there will be a feeding frenzy with teeth fish. We don't have that many fish with teeth that are chewing stuff apart and attracting uh, catfish. So the whole theory that blood makes a difference, I really don't believe that. I don't think it makes a difference. I think it's more of the just the uh, the amino acids, maybe the amino acids in blood are better in actual blood in that, you know, it, it, it is liquid and it breaks down and spreads into the water more quickly. But bottom line is, all that aside, that's another video. The chicken works, the chicken catches fish, the chicken is cheap, chicken is easy. And you probably don't need to get your hands sticky with Jello to use it and catch fish on it. Man, I think there is a small catfish on this bait. Yes, he's little. He's little. I'm gonna try to nurse him in. Just so I can get him in the boat. Just so I can say I caught it. Ah, he may have popped off. Hitting on the chicken again. Ah, maybe he is there. I think he's so small that he's just going for an Uber ride back to the boat. Yep, there he goes. Got into another line. We'll probably lose him now that he's, he's talking about little, dude, little. Well, maybe he didn't get in another line, maybe another fish. Oh, he's barely hooked, barely hooked. Oh, oh, that's a quick release right there, guys. Told you, told you he's whisker hook. We're going to quick release him. Well, we have slowly, slowly plucked off some fish. It's getting down to the channel cats. I think the channel cat part of the spawn is over with. Uh, I've caught, like I said earlier, I, I've really started to catch the channel cats. I've started to pick off, uh, pick off some channel cats in some other lakes on some guide trips that I've been doing. I think the channel cats are done. Uh, blues, not so much, but I'm feeling good there on the backside of it. 
and uh, yeah, it's just covering water here in the late spring, early summer, early summer, whatever you want to call it, is a good way to do that. Uh, another fish there, even though it's a small, small channel, smallest channel of the day, on chicken. Chicken's catching some fish. Maybe we can get one more before we finish here. Here it goes, guys. It looks like there is one right here on this Ripping Lips rod. This has the Viper X reel on it. And guess what, guys? It's another one that is on chicken. I'm going to finish up with a couple of fish. This makes me feel good chicken dominate here in the last bit and I'm gonna be honest with you I think I know why I'll tell you about that in a second I'll try to put this one in the boat feels like a channel got some head shake it's all right better to be catching than not catching at all is he liftable yep another channel another female another on some chicken pretty one small one get it back in the water and I'll tell you why I think I'm catching them right through here on the chicken. Right there we go, guys. That's number 11 in the boat. No monsters here. These, these last few fish have been pretty small. They've been channel cats. But I'll tell you why I think I'm catching them. I'm coming across some areas that I think are mussel beds. And uh, these are areas where I found concentrations of fish before. There's some humps. These are generally areas where you will catch uh, you know, these fish in here feeding. How do I know there's mussel beds here? Well, one's the concentration of the fish that we find in here that we catch, especially in the absence of any bait being around. The other reason is I've anchored in these places. And uh, I go to pulling up your anchors and uh, the mud in the muck is loaded with mussels. It's, it's kind of a, a good little clue there. Uh, the other thing is these fish that we catch. We fish in, you know, areas like this and you catch these fish and they'll poop out the mussels into the boat. What I'm talking about are Asiatic clams, uh, some of the different mollusks, shelled mussels that live down in the mud and the muck. Catfish eat them. They love them. They're a great source of food and they feed on them heavily after the spawn for some reason. So if you can find those areas, uh, especially going into June and July, you'll usually find some catfish. And chicken seems to be a very good bait to be dragging through these areas. We've obviously caught more than the majority of the fish today on chicken. And they've come around some areas that hold some mussels. Put that together, you might catch some fish this summer. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Here are a couple more videos that I think you're going to like. I'd watch that one and then that one. No, no do, do that one first and then that one. Uh, just watch them both. They're both good.